Hi, I'm Chef Mike, and welcome to Kroger Culinary 411, where it's all about the info. Today, it's about basic knife skills. Let's start with cutting boards. My favorite is bamboo. To me, it's probably the safest board because unlike the glass cutting boards, your knife actually goes into the wood. On glass, it slides to the side, which is very dangerous when you're chopping and cutting. For safety issues, when you're cutting on your cutting board, you'll notice that if it's on the counter, it's gonna have a tendency to move around. To stop that from happening, place a dampened paper towel on your counter first before you place your cutting board on so it won't move. My favorite knife of choice is the eight inch chef knife. To hold the knife, take your index finger and your thumb and pinch both sides of the top of the blade. Then bring your other three fingers back onto the handle of the blade. This will give you a sturdy and firm hold over the blade. Notice that the blade is rounded. For the safest cutting technique, the blade actually never comes off the cutting board as you're cutting up and down while moving the blade up and down. To me, the most unsafe chop is I don't do that. The other half of the safe cutting technique is going to be your hand that holds the food you're cutting. You don't want to keep your hand in this position or this way. You want to make sure you do what we call the claw grip where your fingers are at the very top holding the item you're cutting. Let's start with an onion. We're going to cut it from the root end to the stem end. We'll bring our fingers up to the claw grip, put the knife on top, and drive the knife down till it hits the cutting board and then finish your cut. Next, we're gonna lay the onion down on the flat side where it's gonna be easier to handle. Fingers again in a claw grip, remove the end where the stem was, keeping the root end intact. Next, remove the outer layer of the onion. Now, if you wanna make some real thin slices for say a salad, we'll start again with our claw grip. You don't wanna hold it like this because see where my thumb is, that's dangerous. Claw grip, we'll bring the knife, the tip is staying down and we'll make some really thin slices of the onion. We'll make some great slices for salads. If you want to dice the onion, hold the back of the onion, we'll make some vertical slices, not all the way through, because remember that root end is gonna hold the onion together. And we'll turn, and again, with our same cutting technique, roll the knife, make some nice dice. Notice I maintain my claw grip as I move back down the onion as I'm slicing. Now what about a green onion or a scallion? We'll start by removing the hairy end, then remove the one outer layer piece, and we'll make some really thin slices. Or, if you want to dice, you can come in and make one slice down the middle, or turn it 90 degrees and do another one, and then do a really small dice. Green onions have a stronger flavor than your yellow onion or your Vidalia, but not as strong as the shallot, which is kind of a cross between an onion and a garlic. But if you're going to use green onions, say in an omelet, you might want to saute them first to kind of really sweeten them up before you pop your eggs in there. The shallot's going to be done exactly the same way we did our regular onion. Cut it end to end, you'll have a flat side, take out the outer peel, watch your fingers, do the same kind of dice. Now, don't let the steakhouses have all the fun. Slice your shallots really thin, saute them in some olive oil on a really low heat where they're just simmering. It might take about 10 minutes, but you're gonna make some fantastic onions to go on your steak. I'll call them tobacco onions. How about garlic? This is a head, and these are the cloves. Never refrigerate your garlic. Place them in a ramekin and leave them on your countertop at room temperature next to your cooking station. Start by removing the tip where it's connected to the head. Next, we'll place our knife flat and give it a pop. And we should easily peel off the outer shell. Notice it's shaped like a shallot, so we're gonna dice it the same way. We'll start with our claw grip and come in not all the way through so it stays together. We'll make some slices and we'll turn, claw grip, and we'll give it some slices to make a nice dice. And to make a finer dice, we're gonna use a hands-free roll cut. We'll cut it through. Then we're gonna line the pieces up so we get more cuts per swipe. These little ramekins are handy to have on your counter so when you're getting ready to cook, have everything chopped ahead of time. 
The French call it mise en place, which means a place for everything and everything in its place. You never do any cooking till all your items are diced, cans are open, and lined up in the order they go into your pan before you start. Which leads me to the most asked about item to cut, the green bell pepper. We'll start by removing the top and the bottom. Remove that C clump, cut it in half, in half again. Then we're gonna remove these white inner ribs that are extremely bitter. You don't want those in there or the seeds. The shiny side or outer side of your bell pepper needs to be facing down towards the cutting board. If you cut it with it facing up, your knife will just bounce all over the place. It's very tough. So with this, we're gonna go ahead and start with our claw grip. We're gonna go ahead and make some rolling thin chops to make a julienne slice. Then we'll turn and line them up and then come the other way, claw grip, to make a nice dice. How about ginger? Best way to peel it? A spoon. We'll just take the spoon and scrape it right off. Remember that the center portion of the ginger root is very fibrous and tough. So we're actually gonna come in with our knife and cut around to use the outer portion of our ginger, leaving that center fibrous behind. We'll make some nice, thin julienne slices. And we'll turn and make a nice, fine dice. Now the recipe calls for grating the ginger. You can use a microplane or a regular hand grater, keeping the ginger whole after you peel it and just lightly grate around, keeping the middle fiber section intact. Don't use that part. Lemon wedges for seafood. Be nice to your guests. Remove both ends first. We'll lay it flat, and then we'll slice our wedges. And this way, you have a nice little handle so it doesn't slip out of their fingers. Let's finish with a tomato. Start by removing the top, or where the stem end is. Next, we're gonna cut around the seeds, which are bitter, and the juice, which is tasteless. Cut around the tomato, coming around and curving the knife as you come around. And we'll discard the center. Again, we'll maintain our claw grip. We'll make a nice julienne slice. Turn, and then make a nice dice. Use these safe cutting techniques and remember, practice makes perfect.